Next up, looking at our phones. We've got a few different options available. As you can see, a previously connected phone, and we can easily add phones if Search we wanted to. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. So it's very straightforward. Inside of our phone, we're, oh, we're not going to go to Wi-Fi. We're going to go to Bluetooth. There we go. So we're going to turn our Bluetooth on, and we're just waiting for Lincoln Nautilus in the very bottom, and we're going to connect. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. We want to allow contacts and favorites to sync, yes or no, so you've got that option. We're connected, but watch this. So For your successful. safety, please stay alert to change in road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. All right, here we go. So enable 911 assist. Yes, we want to do that. And the big reason why is because if the vehicle senses that there's a potential collision, it's going to automatically dial 911 for us if our phone is connected. We just hit finish there, and on my phone now, it's asking, do I want to allow CarPlay with the Lincoln Nautilus? Yeah, we absolutely want to do that, and it's literally this, this straightforward. So supports CarPlay, we just want to hit enable, connecting to CarPlay. We should get one more message there. Perfect. Boom. We are now fully connected and oh, we're set to go. Amazing. Done and done. So as you can see, they're fully connected. So yeah, we do have factory navigation. So we could just use factory nav, but we could also use CarPlay to use Google Maps. We can use Apple Maps. We can use Waze directly through this middle screen. One thing that I would like to see if this thing was really full screen to kind of take advantage of what's going on here, but it still is nice that we've got so much flexibility as to different map applications and things like that. So if you didn't want to rely on factory navigation, you've got the flexibility to be able to use your own map if you wanted to. Moving back to the main screen, we've got a series of different options now. So we've got LiveX Live, which is a radio app, so we can see what's going on with different stations. There are certain ones and certain apps that will work through this screen. Other ones may not. So it's going to depend on what you've got set up inside of your phone. Certain apps that I can think of that won't work over CarPlay. Spotify is one of them, so it won't work on CarPlay. But if you were hooked up just through Bluetooth, you'd be able to use that as an option instead. Moving back, as you can see there, we've also got our podcast, so we can listen and see what's going on there. Great one, Knowledge for Men in the Jordan Peterson podcast. Great ones. We can jump back to the back, beginning there. Now, we also have the flexibility to be able to customize the tray. So if we go into our phone, we go to CarPlay, we click on the vehicle, we can customize, and we've got a series of different options that we can customize now. So if you have a tendency to listen to your podcast more, you can drag those to the top, your audiobooks, and things like that. If you're never going to use certain things, you can delete with them as necessary. And then anything that you delete is stored at the very bottom. If you've played around with it too much, you just hit reset in order to bring you back to that factory default screen instead. So pretty straightforward. <laughs> nice reminders. All right, so very straightforward there. And then we can go ahead in order to disconnect if we want to very simply. So we go to our settings. We've got our phone list. And as of right now, we've got a few different phones connected. So if we connect into my phone there, We've got CarPlay that's currently enabled. We can connect a Bluetooth phone and media instead. So if your music isn't working, like the YouTube app is one, and I mentioned Spotify, they won't work natively through CarPlay, but if you were connected through Bluetooth, that audio would work. So we just disable CarPlay, we connect to our media, and it's that straightforward. If we look at our phone settings, series of different options available, we can't adjust anything right now because we're in CarPlay, but if we go back and connect to our Bluetooth instead, so let's disconnect from CarPlay, Take a second to finish that up, perfect. So we're connected there, we hop back into the phone, we go into our phone settings and a ton of options. So because we've got multiple phones connected, if we go back, we've got two phones connected right now, we do have the flexibility of setting a connection priority, so favorite phone. So if, if both phones are in the vehicle, who's going to be connected to the vehicle first? We can manage our contacts, look at text messaging, we've got a roaming warning and battery notifications, or we can scrap it, we can remove it from the vehicle, and we are now disconnected. So it literally is that simple working with an iPhone inside of this vehicle. Now, sitting up an Android device is literally the exact same process. So if you weren't on this main screen, if you were on any of the other ones, we could just click on phone along the very bottom. And as you can see there, we can connect to a previously connected phone or we just hit add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. And very similar to what we just saw. All right, so we scroll down and we've got Lincoln Nautilus. So we're just gonna connect through. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Okay, and we are connected. Do we want to access safety, to contacts, messages, etc.? Please et stay alert to change in road conditions and use Sync's voice-activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Okay, so we're fully connected there, and immediately, like we saw on the Apple side, does it, it supports car, uh, Android Auto. So, do we want to enable, disable, etc.? We're going to enable, and as you can see there, 
connecting in and it's going to take a second. We're going to go three, two, one, and boom, we are fully connected. So it literally is that simple being able to connect through. Looking, we do have, same idea, we've got our nice pinch to zoom there. So as you see there, it's very, very responsive on both the Android and the iPhone side of things. We can change around our navigation if we want to. We can literally kind of zoom ourselves in, in and out, etc. We've got our traffic sources, we've got our route options, about settings, and a number of other things. Along the very bottom, we've also got our podcast that we can listen to there. Moving back to the main menu, this is going to be the main Android Auto menu. We've got our music, we've got our notification center, and then our Google Assistant. <clears throat> and that's something I missed on the Apple side. So if we press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, so as you can see there, that's going to bring up our main Siri assist, or our main sys, uh, Sync 4 Assistant. But if we press and hold, that's going to bring up our Google Assistant instead. And that's going to be the same way for Siri. So we do a quick press in order to bring up, bring up our, our Sync 4 system. We'd press and hold that button in order to bring up our Assistant. But we could also do things like say, OK, Google, in order to bring up that Assistant instead. So you do have quite a few different options that are available there, just depending on how you prefer to connect yourself. So very, very straightforward as we see. But as you see there, we've got our podcast, we've got phone, maps, and a number of other options. Now, certain apps will not work directly over, over Android Auto, exactly what we saw there. So as you see there, this does occasionally happen as well, but all we do is just launch ourselves back in. And let's go back. And this is, it's not just on the Android Auto side of things. Unfortunately, I've, I've been in a number of different vehicles where Android Auto specifically just likes to cut out randomly. So it is just making sure that your phone is up to date with its most current firmware, software, etc. Just knowing that that can occasionally happen. Not all the time, it does happen sometimes though. And that's the same. I've been in Land, Ro Land Rover Jags. I've been in a few others where that does happen. Actually I, was actually, I was in the Kia Telluride recently and that thing actually wouldn't even connect to Android Auto. So <laughs> every vehicle is different. And I mean, as you saw there. Now, very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side of things, we do have the flexibility to be able to customize this thing a little bit. So if we go into our phone, we see there, we search for Android Auto, and we can just pull in to this main screen so we can see what vehicle we're currently connected to. We can customize the launcher if we want to. So we can literally just kind of do a drag and drop in order to move things around. But we do need to restart Android Auto in order for any changes to take into effect. So it's not going to happen automatically, but we do have the flexibility to be able to adjust this very similar to the iPhone side of things. We've got our Google voice detection. We've got Android Auto starting while we're locked. We've got our Google Assistant and a number of other options. So we do have a few different options that are available specifically on the Android Auto side of things. Like I said, if we wanted to adjust certain things, like if we wanted to, let's hop back into Android Auto for a second there, into our settings. Oh bottom button there. That's what I'm looking for. So this main one. So if you wanted to adjust that, we do have the flexibility to do it by using our customized launcher. But when we do, we just have to shut down our Android Auto and relaunch in, any for, in order for any changes we make here to take into effect in the main screen there. Now, very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side of things, we can jump into our settings along the very bottom there, go in, into our phone list, we've got our Galaxy, we can disconnect, connect, we can disable, we can scrap it out if we wanted to delete that phone as well, and it really is, so 321 as you saw there, that simple. And that's how you set up a phone inside of the 2022 Lincoln Nautilus.